M0FXV, welcome to my channel, TYT9600. Let's have a look at the USB connection here. So go right click, device manager. Now normally when we do this, we'd be looking in our ports, but you're not gonna find anything because it doesn't use that. It actually uses, if we scroll down here to the bottom, this bit here that says STM device in DFU mode. Now, to make sure you've got the correct driver, now I've installed it, so it's saying that now. It, it will probably say something like um, universal serial connection or something like that. So right click it, click update driver. If you've already downloaded all the correct information, so if I go back to my window here, you've got downloads here for your CPS firmware ETC. It, it will download it to your, probably your C drive. So you'd have to look in there and I'll show you mine. I've also got the link here from Passion Radio and you've got some USB cable drivers there as well, just here and more firmware, okay, and CPS. So everything you need is here. The cable, you can see what that looks like above the radio in my video, you can see that the cable in my particular radio hasn't got this big lumpy thing at the end. It's just using the, the hardware that's inside the radio, which is great, makes it easier, but sometimes some of the older models, they need that sort of chunky TYT bit at the end because it's got a special chip in there. But anyway, if we go back to our programming software and then right click device manager, that's your four squares at the bottom, double click USB serial bus controller, that's where you're gonna find it. Also same for firmware as well. If we right click, go, uh, let's have a look here, update driver, then go browse automatically. Remember that, browse automatically computer. Then browse again, and I recommend you go to your C drive because that's where I found it. So you get this window up here, go to C drive, local C, click OK, and you should be able to see, right, let's do that again. You click it first, then you're looking for where it downloaded your software for this radio. So look, CPS MD9600, if you click that once, look, it says USB driver. So when you click that now, or you could click another program that you downloaded, like I was trying to download the firmware, so I clicked this one, DMR firmware down, download boot. Both worked, one worked for firmware, but in the end they both worked. Uh, for firmware, I will show you how to put it into firmware loading. So let's just go back to that one. Look, CPS, click it once. US, you see the word USB driver there. Click that. And then click OK. And it puts that here. Then you go next. And it puts it, look, STM device in DFU mode. Close. So it says STM device. So now you can actually even put it in firmware mode. So if we turn off the radio completely... This is how you do firmware mode. You turn it off. Now I found, I found I had to do this at least once before it started reading my programming software. But anyway, you turn it off, hold down the P and the one here, and then don't touch the green button, but then turn on using the power supply. So P, P and one. Power supply is off at first. So P1, turn the power supply on, the whole radio starts to flash. Now I, fa I found that I had to put it into this mode, even to make it initially read the software, you know, the programming software that you can see in the background here, all this kind of stuff, all your channels and all that, where you write and read data, which we'll do that in a sec. I'll just quickly show you the firmware process while we're here, we may as well. So you download the boot up tool, which is this. See the, these three blocks and I'll, there'll be a link in the description for this software. And then to do the firmware, when you're in DFU mode like we are, you open the file for upgrade, go like so. Choose the one, now you've got to be careful which one you choose. Now I, I've got the MD9600 normal mode, it's not GPS. I don't want it to record loads of items, I just want it to have a big CSV file, so the best one to choose, in my opinion, is the top one. So when you double click that, it will then start to, when you click, you've got that in the right place. Now, I'm not gonna do it now, because I've already installed the firmware on mine, but you then click this one here, download file of upgrade, and that will just download it to the radio, and when it reboots, you'll have the latest firmware. But I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna turn, just close that down. 
I'm going to turn the power supply off and then to turn the radio on like normal. Like so. Hold, now we can hold down the green button because we're not doing DFU mode, although the, the cable is still connected. You can see I've already programmed mine because the call sign's there on the front. So once you're in this mode and you've got the cable connected, if we go right click device manager, you'll see that it still says if we click universal bus, it still says STM device in DFU mode, okay? You have to have that. It's no good looking for ports because you're not going to find a port because it's not using the traditional port type method of connecting the software. Once you've done that, you should be able to read and write. So let's just go program, read, read data. And you'll see the radio is now saying program USB mode. So there you go, you hear that noise. So I hope that helps you. And then once you're in this, start at the top, basic information, that's just telling you what we are. So it's the range of radio, model name, RT90, it's saying that because I've loaded the RT90 firmware. Uh, you could do the TYT. You've got CPS, hardware versions, I'm on 2.08 MCU version. So all your information's there. General settings, call sign, DMR number, and I put my DMR number here on the right as well. I've done a separate video program in this radio. So just going down through, the first thing you want is, is to create your contacts, to be honest. These are your contacts. This one here, contact. These are all the DMR groups that when you transmit, when you key that microphone, you're gonna come out on these groups. So you can add and remove just by clicking add. We go add there, look. We could create, we'll do this word chat. Chat two, let's call it. Actually, we'll do chat three, because I think that's CQ UK. Uh, it's a group call, not a private call, and then you need the number, that's the most important thing, 235, actually it is 2352 actually, for CQ UK. Oh, someone's already done it, look, so let's try 2353 three, then, add. Yeah, so it's, it's already in there, it won't let you duplicate, but that's fine. Once you've got your contact, then you've got to create a channel, so you go to channel, right click, add, these channels were already put in. You just go all the way to the bottom to the channel that you just added. It'll be blank. See it here? Channel two. If it says channel two, channel one, it's blank. Double click it and then you get this window. You can either create an analog channel or a digital. So analog, you just put in your name. So if we could go GB3WR. Then we put in the frequency. There's no shift, 145.600. Transmit is going to be with you on your input, 145.000. That's effectively the shift. Then you just need your tone on the encode. So CTCSS encode is 94.8 there. Look. So I think we're all good. Uh, your timeout, you want that to be higher than 60 seconds. Otherwise, you're going to run out of you know talking. Uh, and then you can change your power and things like that. Okay, we're looking around. That'll do for now. Uh, yeah, put the power, actually on WI, you probably need high power. It's quite a powerful radio mine, so we'll put it on middle. So that's that one done, but you do need to put it in a zone so you can find it. So if that channel, you'll have to go to a zone. Zones, you scroll through zones, and each zone has groups of channels. So I've created a zone here called Favourites, Hubnet and Favourites. So I go down, I can just add that channel in like that. You can add it on the A and the B band or you can have different channels on the B band. So we go down like so, we've got a few channels here that we've created. Yeah, and you can go click, click, click and add as many as you like. So I know it's, you know, it's confusing, but you're creating a channel. Now, if you create a digital channel, let's do this one, go all the way back down. Channel one here is empty. If we go uh, a digital channel, so we'll just put one of my hotspots in there. So we'll go hotspot two. Two, we have to select digital now it could be a repeater or a duplex hotspot so it'll be you can put different frequencies in but I'll just put in my my normal hotspot frequency for 431.550 but you put a shift in now color code is basically your CTCSS we use one on hotspots three on many repeaters 
your slot. So I could put this on a different slot. So slot one and two is like cutting the channel in half. Got your slot. Power, because it's a home hotspot, low power is fine. Repeat slot, but you do have to add the contact. Otherwise, when you key, no one's going to hear you. So you've got to choose, you know, where you're going to key. So let's do that chat two one there. Chat. Chat hotspot. That'll probably be two, three, five, zero, I would say. Like so. We might add another one called TG9 while we're here. So we just go back to the top channels. Right click, add. Scroll down, blank channel, and we're going to call this one Hotspot 9. We might be duplicating, but we'll soon find out. 431.550 is my hotspot. 431.550. Course digital. And then contact nine, which is also called local, because it's only nine links you to your hotspot. It doesn't link you to the talk groups. You use the radio to link you to talk groups. And then just color code one, I leave it on slot one. So we've created hotspot nine now, and we need to put that in a zone so we can find it. So we go back to the zone, double click zone, information go to my favorite zones at the bottom because that was the recent one i did where is it um let's just put it in hubnet zone actually we're in the wrong place that's channels do that again zone my favorites there they are the zone is full of channels you can choose every channel you create is in the list on the left so you go nine across nine across and that's the, you get the idea you save it as you go so you don't forget things and then write data to radio so you're adding contacts which are talk groups you're adding channels frequencies you're choosing whether it's analog or digital it's a lot to learn with dmr there's no easy with dmr unless someone does it for you you can get a code plug with lots of repeaters programmed in but chances are you're not going to be near those repeaters uh, so well, I mean, if you're driving up and down the motorway, that would be okay, I suppose. But chances are you're going to be at home and you just want to use your hotspot. And that's where you're choosing whether you program each channel individually or you just use talk group nine and then you manually dial using the radio. So you would just type in a talk group number, key the mic, and it would take you to that talk group. So that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. We'll get all the links in the description and we'll see how it goes. 7-3, all the best.